Hi folks, welcome to the Cannabis Corner. I'm your host, Kerry Burns. A lot of people are wondering about how much uh, hemp you could actually grow in an acre of land. And tonight we're going to discuss that in a little bit of detail and compare it to other food crops that are grown around the country. Uh, in 2006, uh, the United States set a record corn crop. Uh, they produced uh, 93 million acres of corn. And actually out of that 93 million, they only, they only harvested about 87 million, but this was a record amount. It hadn't been done for probably about 60 years since 1944. And uh, the average yield per corn in, in a record year like that is around 150 bushels an acre. And uh, the cost for corn right now is running about 560 a bushel. So the crop itself yields around $800 an acre, 800 to 1,000 depending on the yield. And uh, what we want to do, we want to look at uh, how does that compare to the hemp production that you'd have. And so here's, here's what we're looking at. Of course, we know that we can get about 2,000 pounds of hemp fiber in one acre of land. Uh, now, hemp has planted 40 plants per square foot. And when you look at the fact that you have 43,560 square feet in an acre, then you're looking at about 1.75 million plants to produce this 2,000 pounds of fiber. As it turns out, it works out to be just under 850 plants to produce one pound of fiber. So uh, there is pretty densely grown. And not only do you get the hemp fibers out of that, but 65% of the weight that's produced is also available for paper production. And then the leftover material, the, the throwaway stuff, the leaf matter and the, and the stems and stuff that's, be, that's below the uh, fiber layer uh, can all be thrown back into the, the field for, for mulch and stuff. So the, when you look at the fact that you can get 2,000 pounds of hemp, fi uh, hemp fibers, this would yield you, even at the low end market price that they were doing back in the 40s, this would yield you around $600 an acre. And then if you add the cost of the, the hemp paper that would be produced from that and all, you'd double that value. It'd be up around $2,000 per acre. Uh, compared to the $750 to $850 you get from corn, you can see that an acre of land growing hemp is actually more profitable to farmers than growing corn. Now the reason they had such a bumper crop of corn is because of this uh, use of ethanol in the gasolines and stuff. In fact, it was uh, farmers planted on average around 25% more corn than they had in the, in the years prior. And it was due to the fact that they were, you know, that ethanol and gasoline was becoming a big deal. But if you look at uh, that the fact that 30 barrels of hemp oil could be produced from an acre of land and this will this will generate roughly around 2500 gallons of gasoline even if you sold it at one dollar a gallon you'd still be three times the amount on the dollar value of what that that uh, corn would produce in, on a given acre of land so hemp itself just growing for those products alone the hemp oil itself would be about three times more profitable than growing corn if you look at the uh, planting the acre as plants for that you're going to use for smoking material to, to harvest the dried flowers. Those are planted about one plant every nine square feet. And so you'd have about roughly 4,500 plants in an acre of land. And if you just figured that one plant would yield one ounce of dried flowers that was smokable, then you'd be looking at around 4,500 ounces of, uh, of, of smoking material out of one acre. And if you sold this for $10 an ounce, which I predict the price may even actually drop below that, but say they, that it falls around 10, which would be fair, then you're looking at around $45,000 for that acre of crop versus, you know, two to 3,000 just for hemp fiber and then another 2,000 or so for the uh, hemp fuel at a dollar a gallon. And of course, that price would, go, would be higher if you compared it to what they charge for gasoline. But the whole idea of growing hemp and producing hemp fuel would be to produce a cheaper fuel and one that's also renewable and would free us up from this foreign oil that we export in this country. Uh, if you look at 30 barrels per acre, and then the, the average consumption in the United States is around a million barrels a day, in one to two million barrels a day, but we'll just stick with one, one million barrels a day. We could grow 
about a tenth of what they grow in corn a year, and it would supply all of our fuel needs in this country. We would generate around 400 million barrels of oil from hemp oil just growing a tenth of what they drew in corn. Now, the average corn produced in the United States is around 90 million acres. So if we, if we grew just 10 million acres of hemp for hemp fuel, we could totally free ourselves from this foreign, foreign oil glut that we seem to be wrapped into, and that's really bottleneck in this country. It costs, it, you know, the fact that gasoline is 265 and up for a gallon right now, you can, um, you can see the amount of money, that revenue that would be coming into our economy if we grew hemp here. And it's something we could produce really cheap. The 20 barrels, 20 to 30 barrels of hemp oil, the seed for that and the amount of fertilizer and all would amount to less than $100 per acre. And the fact you could turn around and generate this kind of revenue, it, it, it's a pretty profitable situation. And if you plant the uh, plants every nine square feet, like we said, for the f dried flowers and stuff, just at one ounce per plant, you're looking at a tremendous amount of money. But most of the uh, seeds that, that are sold for, on the uh, seed market around the world for cannabis, they, uh, they give you the yields that you're to expect from each plant growing under ideal conditions. And under ideal conditions, you could generate anywhere from two to four ounces. So this, this value, even though we've limited it to just one ounce per plant, in reality would probably be closer to four ounces per plant. And when you do the math on that, you're up in the hundreds of thousands of dollars just at a $10 an ounce price. This is why I have been in the previous issues, we, I've been talking about the price structure that they have for cannabis today. This is a black market price. And, and the only reason it's selling for $20 a gram is because it's illegal. And once you make cannabis legal, this is why the price will fall down to around $10 an ounce, even for the really exceptional varieties right now that are selling for $500 an ounce. Those would be available for $10 an ounce because you're going to be able to produce an unlimited amount of plants. And if you look at one acre of plants, going to yield around 4,000 plants. You know, even if you took double the area and say you just generated 2,000 plants at an ounce a piece, which would really be 8,000 ounces instead of 2,000, you can see how the $10 price for an ounce of cannabis, no matter what the quality was, is really a very reasonable projection to make. And uh, I've had several comments and, and from our different uh, viewers on the segments and wondering how, how in the world could those primo varieties that they're paying $500 an ounce right now for, how could those drop down to $10 an ounce? Well, when you don't have to go to jail for growing cannabis, you can plant more than 10 or 15 or 20 plants without having to worry about going to jail. And if you planted the full acre, even at one plant every 20 square feet, you're looking at a tremendous amount of volume of dried flowers to, to put into the market. And this is what's gonna drive the price down. But it's a good thing. It's uh, because you, the, once the cannabis is legal, the market's gonna open up completely. Your, your illegal market, you'll, you'll have tenfold in sales once the cannabis is legal because people will be able to afford it. And when people are able to afford things, they tend to buy them. And this will be a very good for our economy right now when we don't have any jobs. We, the, the revenues right now from farms, I mean, you look at the corn, seven, $800 for corn. Uh, cotton brings about two or $300 an acre. Uh, even rice, you know, that's still pretty much down there on the lower than $1,000 an acre. So the, the idea of growing hemp for m the many th products that it produces is also good for the pocketbook for the farmer. And when, and when, the, when we study the fact that all these big major farms have pretty much put the farmer out of business, this would be one way the farmer can make a comeback and actually make some decent money. Not saying that he had to switch everything, quit growing crops, because that's not going to be the case. There's, there's a lot of farmland out there that's really not suitable for crop production, but would be excellent for hemp production because it does not take a tremendous amount of fertilizer or a tremendous amount of water. It does take some. I'm not saying you can grow it in barren land and completely, you know, in a barren, dry situation, but it certainly doesn't take the amount of food and water that some of the food crops require. And after several years of growing this, these products in the field, the leaf litter and the organic buildup matter in the soil will render these, this land, these acreages that you can't grow food crops, then those will become viable for food crop. So it, it, it's a way of, crop, of doing crop rotation on the farm and, 
in farmland that you really can't generate a dollar out of. You can take and grow the hemp products, the fuel, the fibers, the paper, the plywood, the press board, all sorts of composites and stuff for construction. And this will be a boon for the farmers. It uh, actually taking land that they're not doing anything but paying taxes on and, and, and having to maintain, and they can turn around and put a product on there that's actually gonna generate them more money than the food crops that they're growing on their farmland that is capable of producing food. And after several years, you, you pretty much turn all of it into food producing. So it's not like we're going to just do a total shift and, and every square acre of land we have, we're going to start just growing nothing but hemp and hemp products. Of course, we'd all starve to death. Even though you can make food products from the hemp, I think that you know people want a little bit more variety than that. But this is one way to really put a boon and a boost in the economy, not only in the farmer, but also into the economy itself. And so it, it just behooves us. We are just a stupid country to be worrying about somebody getting high on marijuana when you can go down to the store and buy Jack Daniels and get so polluted in the brain that you pass out. Marijuana's never done that to anybody. It's never sent anybody to the hospital. And it's so stupid that we're hung up on the fact that people get high on marijuana and this preventing this trillion dollar a year hemp industry. And we could actually bring the hometown farmer back into full focus. And maybe the farm aids and stuff will become a thing of the past because farmers will be able to generate enough money to keep their farms going and turn the land that they're pretty much useless right now into viable food crop production. So let's support this hemp uh, production. It, it's a win-win all the way around. From top to bottom, it's going to generate jobs. It's going to be a boost to the economy, boost to the farmers that are suffering right now. And hopefully it'll, it'll make the, these farmers be more competitive with these giant grow ops that really don't care about the kind of food they produce for us. And uh, join us on the next issue of the Cannabis Corner because we are going to start talking about the uh, various varieties of the smokable cannabis and, uh, and the yields that each of these will produce and the THC levels and stuff that each of these are expected to, to produce. And I thank you for tuning in.